I've got two broken power tool battery packs. We all know these are sometimes the most expensive part of buying new power tools. So today, let's see if we can fix them. First, we have a DeWalt 20 volt max lithium ion 5 amp hour battery. This one came with a lot of other tools that I bought. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. This one I bought from a viewer named Ryan. I paid him $40 for it. He said it will not charge on the charger. And inside, he found a burn chip. Since this one is already partially opened, let's take a look at this one first. Before I get started on this video, I want to take a minute to address my health. If any of you haven't seen my YouTube community post or the post on my website, I have been diagnosed with lymphoma back in December, so you're going to notice a few changes in my appearance and maybe possibly in the upload frequency. Even now, you may be able to see a scar on my neck. I had a port placed for my chemotherapy treatment, so you may see that as I'm working, I also have kind of a bump on my chest where the port is. At some point, I'm gonna lose all of my head hair, so you're gonna see Hat Steve coming out probably in my next few videos. So I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit about what's going on so you're not too concerned when you see my physical appearance changes in the next videos. I don't wanna talk any more about that right now, but if you wanna know more details, I did put up a page on my website. I'll put a link for that in the description and you can go there and learn a little bit more. And I do wanna thank all of you guys that did see and comment on my community post and on my post on Facebook. I really appreciate all the support. Now, on with the repairs. And first we have this Milwaukee 18 volt, two amp hour battery pack. It's got four screws in the bottom. I don't think there's any screws under the label, which is amazing. Okay, and there we go. We're getting right to it. We got the, okay, and the battery pack just comes right out. All right, that's what I like to see. Don't see any like real damage or liquid damage down inside here, so. Whatever caused this was probably not caused by liquid damage, I don't think. Now, let's take a closer look at this. Let's get under our microscope so we can look at this better. So here we have the button that shows the battery charge level with these LEDs right here. Let's press the button. And none of them light up, as I would expect. Oh, that's because they're already disconnected. So this was welded onto the, the nickel plating that goes to the battery, and that's been disconnected, as has this side right here. So it looks like the person I bought it from disconnected those. Then we have a bunch of other components. We got one of the main chips on the board there. That one looks fine. Another one of the main chips also looks fine. But then when we come over here, we see a big problem. Now, what I'm wondering with this is whether we can get this plastic coating off and see any numbers on this chip. Because sometimes you can find these replacement chips and sometimes you just can't. And the thing with these chips is they're really cheap, generally speaking, if you can find them. This one is pretty burned up though, so I'm not sure we'll be able to get any numbers off of it. Another thing I'll do is I'll wet it with a cotton swab and some IPA, and that usually lets the numbers show through. 4401, is that a D? That looks like a D. Let's turn it up this way. Yep, okay. 4401 D. And then, what are the numbers or letters below it? Looks like S, C, P, A. I'm not convinced that's an S at the beginning, but it kind of looks like one. Let me know in the comments if you think that is something else. All right, I'm gonna look up this chip and see if I can find it, then we'll move on. So I was able to find some of these chips on eBay. It looked like from a, actually two sellers from China. So I bought 20 of these for a total of $10. Now they're not gonna be here until after this video publishes, but that's okay because the seller sent along this replacement board. As far as I can tell, the chips are different, but it should work exactly the same. The main problem that I see replacing this whole board is we'll have to weld this piece and this piece down onto these nickel strips. Now I did just buy a spot welder for this, but I've never done it before, so we'll see how that goes. The first thing we need to do though is get these mounting pins free. We have one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna do that first so we can get this board fully off of, actually, yeah. This one looks like it's been broken. This one's still attached. That one's attached. And that one's attached. This one is not. So 
Um, also, I, I think maybe this is this little temperature sensor right here. So I will have to remove, oh no, that's already, that's been broken up. Oh, the top's been broken off. It's just right down here. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's get these desoldered and then we can get this board off, install this board and see if we can figure out how to spot weld. Looking at this, I think the best way to desolder these is to come in with some solder wick and wick up as much of the solder as we can out of these holes. And then I can also gently pull up on the board while I'm doing that. And that will hopefully free the board without causing any problems. I am gonna remove these screws so I can pull up on the board as much as I need to. So that one and this one. Oh, okay, so it looks like the seller already tore those or somehow got them off. And then with those removed, I need to bend these pins straight up so they'll go onto the new board. All right, now. Okay, there we go. Now more flux, and then we can solder this on. And again, I'll be using my large iron. These are kind of larger pins with a larger ground plane. So we need lots of heat and lots of solder. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up the flux, and then we'll get to learning how to spot weld. Okay, there are my practice welds. I'm using a machine that I've never used before other than these four welds. But the nice thing is we got a little, a couple dots right where the spot welds go right here. So let's give this a try and see what happens. Here we go. Got one on that little dot, one on this little dot. I am using a pedal operated machine. Okay, and ready? And that didn't do anything. Okay. Might be, I feel like the probes are touching. Can I do it without touching? Okay, ready? Okay, that almost worked. Not enough power though. I'm gonna turn the machine up. Okay, here we go. You spot welding ex experts are probably gonna have some good laughs at this, but I guess that's what my channel's about, right? Oh, still not. Okay, I'm gonna try moving the probes apart just a little bit. I feel like that's causing a problem. One there and one here, and we're gonna go straight down as much as we can here. There we go, and go. Still not enough power, okay. We're gonna turn it up to full power. These are a lot thicker plates than what they gave me to practice with. Here we go. Ooh, almost. I'm gonna give the machine a little break and then we'll try it again. I'm gonna try this one over here real quick. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what it's supposed to do. So, that tab is soldered down nicely, spot welded down nicely. This one, I can't get to stick. I'm not totally sure why. So I think what I need to do is just hold these spot welder tips on there long enough and just spot weld several times in a row. And I, I hope that'll get this to stick. Let's give it a try. Okay, here we go. And one, got a little smoke. I think that's good. Two, Gonna wait a few seconds between each one to let the leads cool down. Three. I'm gonna try doing like six. I'm not worried about it burning through. Four. Five. Every time I press the foot pedal, you can see the leads move. That's not me moving it. That's just how much current is flowing through them. 
How many was that? Five? Six. And we got it. Okay. So that one's good. That one's good. Now I think it's time to put this thing back together and see if it'll charge now. We've got this little pad over the temperature sensor all fixed up. Is that? Hopefully this thing fits in here. It feels like this is bigger. It can't be bigger. Uh, it might be a tad wider. I might have to do some squeezing to get this in here. Come on. There we go. Got it. Okay, good so far. Now, I do have to say, generally speaking, don't try any of this stuff with battery packs at home. Lithium-ion batteries are dangerous. So whatever you do, like if you want to go learn about it and learn under somebody or however you want to do it, that's awesome. I mean, we need more of this stuff being done, but at the same time, you got to know how to keep yourself safe. And watching me do this is not a good way to learn that. This is all just an experiment, and I'm just kind of having fun with it as I learn. So this is for entertainment purposes only, not instructional purposes. Okay, and that looks like it's all together. Okay, let's get this in a charger and see what happens. This is an aftermarket charging protection circuit board that, that the seller sent with it, so it is possible that the board itself doesn't work, but let's plug it in and see what happens. And hopefully nothing explodes. Okay, we have an official Milwaukee charging, charging charger. Is that how? I feel like it should go in there further than that. There we go. Red, green, red, green. Is that bad? I don't even know what this is supposed to... Oh, here we go. This is what we're going to do. I did get a brand new one so we could see what happens with it. We just get red. I feel like that's not... Uh, I feel like there's probably something wrong with this one. Red, green, red, green. So either we did something wrong or the charging board has a problem on it. Or the other thing about this is these battery cells could be so discharged that the charger won't actually charge them. That actually might be what's going on here. Let's see what kind of charge these have in them. 2.4 volts. Now I know the batteries have to be up to a certain charge amount before the battery charger will charge them. I don't know what that needs to be on these though. Out of an 18 volt battery, you'd think they would charge if there was, you know, just under three volts. But let me put it on the charger and just leave it on there for a little bit. And while it's doing that, we'll take a look at this DeWalt battery. Now one of the things that I like about this DeWalt battery pack is you don't have to take the sticker off on the side in order to get it, get to the screws. They're just right here. So I'm gonna get those taken off. And we'll have a look at the inside of this one. All right, and it should... Oh, there we go, we're getting it. Okay. Oh, wow. This looks like it's had some liquid damage. Let's see if there's any voltage in these cells at all. Oh, 14.9 volts. Okay, that's good news. That means if we can get this thing cleaned up and and where it'll charge again, it might actually, might actually work. It means that the uh, cells still have a charge in them. So if they're totally discharged, that's a big problem. But these ones are definitely not. Okay, let's try and take this green bowl. Oh, that wire is just unsoldered from there. So that would be why that doesn't work. I wonder if that's enough to keep the thing from charging. I don't know. I feel like it shouldn't, but it could be, I guess. Well, I still want to get this thing all the way out so we can make sure these battery cells are totally clean. This thing is in there pretty tight, but we're getting it out now. There we go. Yep, that is pretty corroded down in there. These cells definitely have some issues. 
So I'm not an expert on these battery packs. I kind of assume that if they get to where they're in this bad a condition, it's probably best to just replace them. For the purposes of this video, I want to see if we can get it going as is without replacing these cells. That's one of the things that's pretty difficult because if you're going to start replacing cells, you kind of need specialized equipment like the spot welder that I have. It's just much more difficult to repair. So I'm just going to try and clean this up and see if just cleaning alone is going to get this thing working. So first things first, I'm going to try and scrape off a bunch of the bigger stuff and see if we can get a bunch of that off. And then we'll come in with some various cleaners and try and clean the rest of it off. Now, obviously we do have to be very careful because these cells are live. I don't see any cells that are like bulging or anything like that that would give any indication that, you know, they're faulty necessarily, but we do need to be careful. These are better to, battery packs are just better to not mess with unless you've been trained. So this is for entertainment only. And I am using a metal pick to scrape some of this off with. I am doing it very carefully because I don't want to puncture those cells. Okay, now let's start doing a little cleaning here. So this is definitely an area that we've got to do some work on. All of these contacts are, I've got this kind of bluish gunk on them. Probably some corrosion or something from all the nasty liquid that got in here. So we got to make sure these contacts are nice and clean. So for this, I'm going to use BW100 because BW100 is non-flammable and it'll help clean up these contacts really nicely. Oh yeah, those are looking much better already. Dare I say, those are almost looking shiny. That's working really well. Get the top side of them too. All right, now that this is getting quite a bit cleaner, one of the things we have to do is figure this out and figure it out without messing anything else up. Firstly, let's give it a bit of a cleaning here. Okay, and this is where the red wire needs to solder to. So let's get that cleaned up. All right, so now we gotta see if we can get this wire cleaned up enough to actually use it. So I'm first gonna try and straighten it a bit. That'll help the plastic coating come off because we gotta strip back the plastic coating a little bit in order to get down to good wire. I'm not sure if there's gonna be a enough room here to do that because these wires are kind of cut to kind of like the perfect size. So, so let's start stripping back some of that wire and see if we can get to the good wire. So I don't want to strip, strip back any more than I have to on this because there's just not a lot of wire here. We might have to extend this wire out a little bit. Just want to do enough to get down to good wire. Yeah, there we go. That's good wire there. Okay, so now we need to clean out this hole and try and get that wire through the hole. So let's do that next. I'm going to start up my soldering iron and my fume extractor. Then we'll get that. We got a little blob of solder there. We'll get that off and the wire off. So first we better flux this thing up. I'm going to use my large soldering iron for this one. There we go. I'm just going to use a pick, come in from the back side, or try to, so I solder on the front. Hopefully get that wire pushed through there. That wire likes being in there. There we go. Put some flux on the wire. That'll help the solder stick to the wire better. All right, now we're gonna push the red wire through while I have this soldering iron here so I can heat up that hole. And there we go. So now the red wire is fully soldered on. Let's see if these lights work. And the LEDs do not work. 
Okay, I don't, they might, oh, that wasn't soldered on very good at all. I just pulled right out of there. Okay, well, I thought it was on there good. Clearly, it was not. All right, so new plan. I'm going to put some solder on this wire, then stick it through here, and then we'll see if that will work once I get it soldered on. Okay. Yeah, I do see a little trace coming from here over to here, so I'm actually gonna scrape away some of the solder mask there so we can make sure that connection is also good. And now we're back under the microscope and you can see one of the problems is we have this trace right here that is supposed to go to this wire, but it clearly has a break right there, kind of as we suspected. So what I'm gonna do is run a jumper wire from this point right here over to this wire, and hopefully that's enough to get this thing working. So we'll put some flux right over here and more flux over here. Now I'm gonna come in with my soldering iron and add some solder to the exposed copper trace and I will run a trace wire. It is a piece of enameled wire. I'll burn the enamel off, solder the wire to the copper trace, and then solder it over to the red wire. All right, we now have that soldered on. I'm not sure that wire is gonna be long enough, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. I wanna clean out the inside of this case a little bit because it's pretty nasty in there. So I'm just gonna use a toothbrush and IPA and just try and get as much of this rust and gunk out of here. This should help this battery pack slide in and out much easier. Okay, and I don't need this to be perfect. It's not gonna be, because we're not doing a perfect job on this battery pack. Again, this is just to see if we can get it working or not. Okay, and down we go. Definitely slides in tight, but not too bad, that feels pretty good. Let's see if this board's gonna sit down here where it needs to. This is the hard part. Not sure we have enough slack in that wire. Oh, oh, it came unsoldered, okay. So, we're gonna either have to get under here and remove this wire or add a piece of wire to it or something, because that, Definitely didn't work. Okay, and we have this set up to add another wire. I've got a piece of wire through here that's all stripped, and then a piece of wire here and one end stripped, and then this is the original wire to the battery pack. So we're gonna solder these two wires together, and then we'll solder this wire onto the board, and then we'll have plenty of room to do whatever we need to do. So it's gonna be a similar process. I'm gonna start up my fume extractor, then I already have these wires fluxed up. I'm gonna solder them together, and then we'll worry about this joint over here. All right, and that doesn't show it the best, but I think you can kind of see what's going on here. I'm gonna come and trim this wire off, and then I need to add that little circuit trace uh, repair on the back. I'm gonna do that off camera. You've already seen how to do that, so I'll do that, and then we'll give this thing a try and see if it'll work. Let's go with some conformal coating right there, just to make sure there's a little bit of covering on that. It's not, not too important since this is covered really well with the top piece, but just uh, makes me feel a little better about that. Okay, now this top piece needs to be cleaned up, so let's get that done, and then we'll get it back together and see what happens. Again, this isn't gonna be a perfect cleaning. Just trying to get a bunch of the gunk off, make sure there's no nothing causing any of the pins to bridge or contact where they shouldn't. And make it look a little better too. Okay, good enough, now we'll do the top side. Much better. Let's get this thing all together and put it on a charger and see if it charges. And of course, we have to make sure the charger has nice clean pins too. It doesn't do us any good to clean off all the pins on the pack if the charger's nasty. That looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Pack charging. Oh, pack charged? Uh, I don't know about that. Seems to think it's charged. That might not be good. It'll blink three times and then say it's charged. So I think what I'll do is leave this on the charger for a little bit. And see if it still says it's charged. 
in a few minutes. Let's look at this Milwaukee one. So this one's still doing the red and green thing. If it's red and green, the battery is broken. So I'm gonna open this up one more time and see if we can make this fit down on here squarely. If not, I'm kind of thinking either we might have a board that is no good, like it's an aftermarket third-party board and it just might not be good, or it is possible that the cells in the battery pack itself are faulty. But let's get it taken apart again and just have a look. So I took this apart quickly and noticed that that one spot weld I was having problems with came unwelded, so I re-welded it. This time it's welded much better. Let's see if that's enough to get this going. Hey, we got a red charge light. Okay, this one might be fixed. Let's see what happens when we press this button here on the battery pack, see if we get a light. It's really hard to see. It does come on though, let's charge it a little bit. I'm just gonna leave this on the charger now. I think it's probably charging. Let's look at this DeWalt one more time. So it still thinks it's fully charged. Let's take the battery out and have a look and see how much voltage is actually in it. And let's see if this one shows anything. It does not. That's not great news. Okay. It's nice that the DeWalt battery shows which pins are which. We got B minus over here, B plus over here. So here we go. 14.7, basically exactly the same as it was before. Now the DeWalt battery pack, I think it probably could be fixed, but given the fact that there's so much damage inside, so much rust, I think it's gonna be better to just recycle this one just because it, I would probably have to take off all of those batteries and put new batteries in. Also in the long term, I just don't think this battery is going to do well just because of all the liquid damage that is inside. But overall, one battery pack fixed out of two isn't too bad. They definitely don't make these super easy to fix, but also it definitely is possible in some cases. If you like this type of video, be sure to let me know in the comments. I see broken power tools around all the time, so it'd be kind of fun to try and fix some of those if you guys are interested. Another video that's uh, sort of similar to this is a video where I tried to fix a whole bunch of broken Nerf guns. I'm going to put that up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I was able to fix them. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.